Get off the grass. It's for fellows only. Excuse me, sir. Uh, could you direct me to New Court, to Mr. Hardy? Through there. The shoes, they hurt my feet. Ramanujan, we decided that for the good of everybody, you should attend some lectures. But I'm here to publish. All in good time, I hope. But first, we need proofs of your work. I mean, we need a common language. You wouldn't expect us to converse with you in Tamil. No, I don't want this to die with me. Sure, you would work. Thank you, sir. But I have much more to share with you. I have even found a function which exactly represents the number of prime numbers less than x in the form of an infinite series. Yes, I thought if we were going to publish, it should be something uh, groundbreaking. Uh, this will take a lifetime. Maybe two. The movie begins with a quote from the famous mathematician Bertrand Russell stating that mathematics, when rightly viewed, possesses not only truth but supreme beauty. This movie is based on a true story. In 1920, at Trinity College in England, Professor G. H. Hardy, a respected mathematician, wrote in his diary about his encounters with the mathematician Srimavasa Ramanujan. Hardy described Ramanujan as a unique and inspiring figure in mathematics, someone who influenced him greatly and to whom he owed much. The story then takes us back to 1914 in Madras, India. Hardy narrates that Ramanujan was self-made and that he felt a deep connection to him. Ramanujan was a young man in India with an extraordinary talent for mathematics. He worked on mathematical problems on the temple floor and believed he had made groundbreaking discoveries. Eager to share his work, he took his formulas to the mathematics department at Madras University, but he was rejected. They dismissed his work because he lacked formal education and qualifications, which meant he could not be employed. Ramanujan returned home disheartened and expressed his frustration to his friend, Narashima, fearing he would end up unrecognized like Galileo. Although he possessed great mathematical talent, he struggled to find a job and provide for his family. He was constantly away from his wife and mother, seeking for an opportunity. One morning, Ramanujan met a man named Narayana, who was impressed by his work and equally surprised that no institution had accepted it. Narayana introduced Ramanujan to his boss, Mr. Francis Spring. Though initially unimpressed by Ramanujan's appearance, Francis agreed to give him a chance after Ramanujan promised his work would be surprising. With Narayana's help, Ramanujan moved to the city, bringing his wife, Janaki, and his mother, Kamala Tamil, to join him. Despite this, he continued to work long hours and rarely spent time at home. One evening, while working late, Narayana suggested Ramanujan consider going abroad to further his career. Ramanujan had never thought of it before but found the idea appealing. That night, Janaki visited his office, expressing her concerns about his long hours. Narayana explained that he was responsible for Ramanujan staying late, apologizing to Janaki. Janaki then confesses to Ramanujan that many said he cared more about numbers than people. Ramanujan reassured her, saying, not you. He then shared that his love for numbers felt like seeing an invisible painting, something deeply meaningful that he hoped others would one day understand. The next morning, Ramanujan informed his mother and wife that his boss was trying to find someone interested in his work outside India. While Janaki was pleased, his mother was not, saying it was against their Brahmin beliefs to travel overseas. Narayana, however, saw this as an incredible opportunity for Ramanujan to show the world what he could do. Mr. Francis also encouraged him, suggesting that Professor Hardy from Trinity College, a highly esteemed mathematician, might be the right person to appreciate Ramanujan's work. Weeks later in England, Hardy received a letter from Ramanujan, whom Hardy considered an Indian clerk, claiming he could explain the complex negative gamma function. Initially skeptical, Hardy suspected the letter might be a joke. He asked his friend and fellow mathematician Littlewood if he was behind the prank, but Littlewood denied it. Intrigued, Hardy studied Ramanujan's work more closely, finding it puzzling and fascinating. He later showed the papers to Littlewood, who was equally astonished by the complex mathematics they contained. They both agreed it would take a true genius to produce such work. Days later, Ramanujan received a letter from Hardy, inviting him to England. Ramanujan shared the news with Janaki, who was initially hesitant due to the risk of becoming outcasts among their people. Ramanujan assured her that he would bring her to England once he was settled. Janaki then performed a ritual, cutting his long hair as a symbol of release. His mother, however, was unhappy and accused Janaki of encouraging her son to abandon his family and traditions. Ramanujan eventually decided to go to England, and his mother and Janaki gave him a heartfelt farewell. Upon arriving at Trinity College, he was greeted by Littlewood, who found him gazing at the college buildings. Littlewood reassured him, saying that these grand structures could be intimidating, but great knowledge often comes from humble beginnings. Inside, Littlewood showed Ramanujan the famous tree where an apple is said to have fallen on Isaac Newton's head, sparking his discovery of gravity. 
Meanwhile, in the conference room, several scientists were uneasy about welcoming Ramanujan to the college, given his lack of formal training. However, Hardy assured them that Ramanujan had potential and was worth the opportunity. At that moment, Littlewood brought Ramanujan into the room, and everyone fell silent. Littlewood whispered to him that it was a good sign his presence alone could quiet the room. Hardy greeted him, though his enthusiasm seemed slightly dampened, and he introduced himself somewhat shyly. This made Ramanujan feel uncomfortable, and he asked Littlewood if he had done anything wrong. Littlewood reassured him that everything was fine. The next morning, Ramanujan ran across the fields to meet Hardy and Littlewood but was told that only fellows could walk on the grass. He arrived at Hardy's office wearing sandals and explained they were more comfortable than shoes. Littlewood eventually joined them, and Hardy, who had been waiting for Littlewood to arrive, emphasized to Ramanujan the importance of proof in mathematics. While Ramanujan's work was remarkable, he needed to learn the methods to properly validate his theories if they were to be widely accepted. Ramanujan, however, insisted that he had come to publish his work, not to start proving it in English terms. Nonetheless, he presented Hardy with another notebook filled with more mathematical discoveries. Hardy and Littlewood were both amazed, noting that it would take years to go through all his work. Ramanujan humorously suggested it might require two lifetimes as he handed over the second notebook. That evening at dinner, Hardy was pleased as he examined Ramanujan's notes. A fellow college member named Bertie remarked that Hardy would likely spend his life trying to prove Ramanujan's work. Ramanujan joined the dinner, where he met two young scholars, Chandra Mahalanobis and Andrew Hartley, who welcomed him. Hartley shared Hardy's background, noting that Hardy had achieved success through his own merit, and this might be why he felt a connection to Ramanujan. When Ramanujan declined food due to his vegetarian diet, Hardy checked in with him afterward, making sure he was comfortable. In class the next day, Ramanujan listened eagerly but didn't take notes. The lecturer, Professor Howard noticed this and offered him a chance to add to the discussion. Ramanujan, unaware of Howard's reputation, took the chalk and completed the proof himself. Despite his surprise that Ramanujan was able to finish the equation, Howard was displeased with him and warned him never to interfere in his class again. Feeling embarrassed, Ramanujan found comfort in a room with a statue of Newton, reflecting on his experience. Ramanujan later explained his excitement to Hardy, who reminded him that while his intuition was powerful, he needed concrete proof for others to believe his ideas. Hardy asked him why people might wish for them to fail, and Ramanujan replies that perhaps it was partly due to him being Indian. Hardy acknowledged this but believed it was also because their work challenged the norm. Hardy tells Ramanujan about famous mathematicians like Euler and Jacobi, who had also faced challenges in their time. He urged Ramanujan to keep attending lectures and avoid conflict with his professors. Hardy took him to the library, telling him that one day, Ramanujan's own work could be stored among the collections of great scientists like Newton. Meanwhile, Janaki had continued writing letters to Ramanujan, sharing updates and expressing how much she and everyone back home missed him. She included a piece of her clothing and promised that when the time was right, she would come to England to join him. One day, Ramanujan presented Hardy with a new mathematical formula on partitions, but Hardy dismissed it, telling him to focus on proving his existing work. Disheartened, Ramanujan left. However, upon reviewing the formula, Hardy realized that it solved a problem that had troubled many in mathematics. Impressed, Hardy encouraged Ramanujan to keep working on proofs. Ramanujan started submitting proofs, but Hardy often marked them with corrections. Ramanujan expressed frustration with the rigorous process, explaining he wasn't used to proving his insights. Hardy explained that he was being strict for Ramanujan's benefit, and admitted he didn't believe in divine intuition. Ramanujan responded that he believes that Hardy does believe in God, just that he thinks God doesn't love him. Eventually, Hardy shared a paper where he had forwarded Ramanujan's work. The young scholar was thrilled to see that his work was finally published. Ramanujan's joy was infectious as he thanked Hardy repeatedly. Back in India, when Narayana shared the news, Ramanujan's mother celebrated with neighbors, but Janaki felt slighted by her mother-in-law's attitude. Confused by the treatment, Janaki continued writing letters to Ramanujan. Despite the start of World War I, she assured him she would come to him when she could and reminded him that she still loves him. One of the days, while feeling lonely, Janaki went to the temple where Ramanujan used to spend most of his time, hoping to feel his presence. She later gave a letter for Ramanujan to his mother to mail, also offering to help with some work, but the mother declined. After Janaki left, the mother placed the letter in a box and hid it away instead of mailing it. Meanwhile in England, Ramanujan noticed the vegetable markets were nearly empty, with most supplies sent to soldiers fighting in the war. He also found no mail for him at the post office, making him wonder why Janaki had stopped writing. As he left, some English soldiers bullied him and eventually beat him up, saying he didn't belong there while they went off to fight in the war. Ramanujan was homesick, constantly thinking of his wife, and he struggled to get proper vegetarian meals. Hardy faced his own challenges as Littlewood was sent to war due to his expertise in ballistics. 
This left Hardy more vulnerable to criticism from Howard and others who opposed Ramanujan's place at the college. In a letter, Littlewood advised Hardy to focus on Ramanujan's strengths in positive integers rather than primes. During one of their conversations, Hardy urged Ramanujan to provide proof rather than relying on intuition. Frustrated, Ramanujan accused Hardy of being self-centered and not caring about anyone else, reminding him of the sacrifices he made, including leaving his wife. In the meantime, part of the college was now being used to treat wounded soldiers from the war. The next morning, Ramanujan left some of his work with Hardy but began to distance himself afterward. Hardy, realizing he may have gone too far, discussed it with his colleague, Bertie, who advised him to give Ramanujan more freedom and support rather than trying to mold him. In one meeting, Hardy introduced Ramanujan to Major McMahon, an expert on partitions. McMahon doubted Ramanujan's abilities, especially after learning of a supposed error in his work on primes. However, Ramanujan confidently accepted the challenge and returned with results that astonished McMahon. As time passed, Ramanujan's health worsened, and his friend Chandra took him to a doctor who diagnosed early symptoms of tuberculosis. Ramanujan asked Chandra not to tell Hardy, fearing it would affect his work. As they walked back, a zeppelin attacked nearby buildings and, caught in the chaos, Ramanujan began feeling guilt, believing he was being punished for leaving home. Meanwhile, Janaki was still hearing from her mother-in-law that Ramanujan had not replied to any of her letters, and this breaks her heart each time. Ramanujan continued collaborating with Hardy on his mathematical work, and one day Hardy told him that he had recommended him for a fellowship at their college. However, after much discussion, the council ultimately rejected Hardy's application for Ramanujan. Meanwhile, Ramanujan's health was worsening quickly. He started coughing up blood and suffered from a relentless fever. He was admitted to a makeshift hospital at the college to stay overnight. Unfortunately, before Hardy could visit him the next morning, Ramanujan had left. A doctor's voiceover explained that Ramanujan's condition had worsened significantly, leaving him with little time. Ramanujan wandered to the train station, lost in thought. Not long after, Hardy was informed that Ramanujan had been seen in London attempting to jump in front of a moving train. He was brought to a hospital in critical condition, and Hardy rushed to see him. The doctor informed Hardy that there was little hope for Ramanujan's recovery, and a miracle was the only chance left. Hardy, deeply saddened, stayed by his side. The next morning, Ramanujan woke up and called for Hardy, who was by the window. He apologized for all the worry he had caused, but Hardy dismissed it, grateful that Ramanujan was alive. Ramanujan was later moved to the college at Oxford, where Howard and others soon discovered he was close to a significant breakthrough in his work on mathematical partitions. Hardy visited Ramanujan's room, where he noticed how cold it was. Hardy felt guilty for not being a better friend and admitted that his life had revolved only around mathematics. Ramanujan later shared with Hardy that his mathematical ideas came as inspiration from his god. He explained that he received these insights either through prayer or in his dreams. Hardy, although skeptical, said that while he couldn't believe in what he couldn't see, he did believe in Ramanujan. Hardy then delivered a letter to him and reassured him he would live. After Hardy left, Ramanujan read the letter, which was from his wife, Janaki. In it she expressed her heartbreak and wondered why he seemed to have abandoned her. She mentioned that she had left to stay with her brother to find some peace. Despite this painful news, Ramanujan continued his work through cold nights, eventually ending up in the hospital again. This time, however, he had managed to complete substantial proofs for his partition theories. Hardy presented this work to McMahon, who was amazed. With proof in hand, Hardy suggested that Ramanujan should now qualify as a fellow, if not at Trinity College, then perhaps at the Royal Society. Hardy began organizing a meeting and invited Littlewood to support Ramanujan's case. When the board gathered, Hardy gave a heartfelt lecture about Ramanujan's influence on his life and thinking. He described pure mathematics as an endless quest for absolute perfection, a vision embodied in Ramanujan's work. Hardy concluded by challenging the board, asking who they were to question Ramanujan, or, by extension, God. After the presentation, Hardy waited outside while the board deliberated. McMahon spoke in favor of Ramanujan, especially when Howard and others expressed doubts. Eventually, Littlewood emerged to inform Hardy that the board's meeting had concluded, and Hardy re-entered the room feeling hopeful. Later, Hardy dashed to the post office to send a message to Ramanujan, who was in the hospital. When Ramanujan opened the note, he said the words, I am a fellow of the Royal Society. Ramanujan was both surprised and filled with gratitude. Back in Madras, Janaki received a letter from Ramanujan. She then learned that her mother-in-law had been withholding her recent letters to him. Furious, Janaki confronted her mother-in-law, who admitted she had feared that if Janaki joined Ramanujan, he might never return to India. Once Ramanujan felt well enough, Hardy took him back to Trinity College to be sworn into the fellowship. Although Ramanujan initially avoided stepping on the grass, Hardy urged him to walk on it, symbolizing his new status. As a Royal Society Fellow, he received a warm welcome from his peers and was officially sworn in. 
Ramanujan had already decided to return home to see his family and wife. Hardy said a heartfelt goodbye to him, and they embraced. Ramanujan assured Hardy that he would miss him, and Hardy responded similarly. The plan was for Ramanujan to send updates on his work weekly, and he intended to return to England in a year. One year later, Hardy received a letter from India while at his office. He shared the sad news with the other fellows, Ramanujan had passed away. Hardy expressed his pride in being connected to both Littlewood and Ramanujan. This is an honor only a few could claim. In a postscript note, it was mentioned that in 1976, some of Ramanujan's early work was rediscovered, a discovery that can be compared to finding Beethoven's Tenth Symphony. Ramanujan's mathematical discoveries, even a century later, continued to contribute to understanding black holes. A final image of Ramanujan appeared, and it was explained that his illness had worsened upon returning to India, leading to his death a year later. Janaki, in keeping with tradition, never remarried. Hardy and Littlewood's friendship endured throughout their lives, and the five years Ramanujan spent with Hardy would continue to inspire future mathematicians. If you enjoyed this recap and would want to see more videos like these, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.